Dr. Bose of Bose Corporation once said that if you want to know the pathway to success, follow a leader. But if you want to be a winner, you have to forge your own path. And I'd like to share with you the way that I learned that lesson through photography and the camera that taught me how to be a good photographer, which was this one right here. It's the Nikon F2. The F2 is a heavy professional camera that was released in the early 1970s. And this was the camera that professional photographers crawling through the fields of Vietnam were using for documenting the war. It's quite a machine, but it's not my first camera. I have been through a number of film cameras and the first camera that I really took a lot of decent photos with was this one here, which is the Pentax Super Program. And I want to talk about photography a little bit. Photography is the art of recording light. And our eyes are amazing instruments that can work well in brightly lit situations. We can see clearly on a sunny beach, and we can also step into a dimly lit bar and see clearly. But that's not the case with a camera, be it a film camera or a digital camera, because the amount of light that comes in and strikes that film must be carefully controlled and kept within a pretty narrow range where the film is able to work well and render a quality image. Uh, same thing for a digital sensor. And so in order to do that, the camera gives us a couple of controls. We can control the shutter speed, which is how long we allow light to come into the camera and burn an image into the sensor or onto the film. We also have an aperture control on the lens, which is the closest ring here, that is a set of curtains in the lens. So if we're in a dimly lit situation, we can throw those curtains wide open and let a lot of light come in. Or else if we're in a bright situation, we can close the curtains down to just a little pinhole and let just a little bit of that light come through. And by adjusting the aperture, which amount, controls the amount of light passing through the lens, and the shutter speed, which controls how much time we allow that light to come in, we can get the correct amount of exposure onto our film or onto the sensor. These two controls can be used in an artistic way, which is the aperture control can be used to control depth of field. So that means that if we shut the aperture way down so that we only allow a little teeny bit of light to come through the lens, then when we take a photograph, everything in the photograph will be in pretty sharp focus. You'll see the foreground, the background, and the subject that you're focusing on, and they'll all be in fairly clear, sharp focus. On the other hand, if we open up the lens and let a lot of light through, then only the object that we are focusing on will be in sharp focus and the background will have a nice soft blur. And so that's an artistic effect that we can use so that the viewer will have their attention directed to the thing that we have in focus. Then, of course, we have the shutter control, which controls how long we let the light come in. And if we have a very slow shutter, there will be motion blur. So if we're taking a photograph of a sports game, for example, you'll see the ball looks blurry as it is captured over that period of time. Or we can set a very fast shutter speed, which will freeze that action in that moment in time, and you can clearly see the ball in the air. <clears throat> So we can use these two controls artistically. And we have to get those settings close to exactly right. Otherwise, the film will not be properly exposed. And to help us do that, the cameras have metering inside of them. So when you look through the viewfinder, you can see in the display whether or not the settings you have chosen are going to expose the film enough or too much and you can adjust accordingly. Now this camera, this Pentax camera, was the first camera that I was really successful at taking a lot of photos with that turned out technically correct. And that's because it is a 
Pentax Super Program. It has a lot of automated features. So you can set whatever aperture you want in the lens and it will automatically give you the correct shutter speed to properly expose the image. Or conversely, you can set the lens to an automatic mode and then set whatever shutter speed you want and it will adjust the lens accordingly to give you a properly exposed image. This camera has a third mode which is full automatic where it adjusts both the shutter speed and the lens. And so all you need to do is pick up the camera, focus, and shoot. And that's how I shot a whole lot of photographs. And they all turned out technically correct, but not necessarily artistically impressive. Well, in those days I was shooting a lot of film. And I cared about how well my film was processed. And so I would take the film that I shot to the local camera store to get it processed. I felt like the camera store did a more careful job than the big box stores would. So one day I'm at the camera shop getting some film developed and I saw on the used shelf of gear this Nikon F2. And I didn't really anticipate using the Nikon F2 but I thought that is just gorgeous. That would look pretty cool on my shelf. Kind of a piece of art. And the price was reasonable-ish and so I picked up this camera and an extra lens for it and thought that's pretty neat and I stuck it on the shelf. Sometime later I got an assignment to go work in Mexico for a while in the middle of Mexico in an area that I thought might be a little bit sketchy, a little bit dangerous. And I thought, should I take my camera with me? But this at the time was a fairly modern high-tech camera. And I thought, this might look like something that somebody might want to steal, might want to pull off of me as I'm walking down the street. And I didn't want to lose my expensive high-tech camera. I thought maybe it would be better for me to take this old camera, which probably doesn't look as interesting to steal. And also this camera is a hand-built Nikon camera, and it's really rugged. It's fully mechanical, and it's heavy. It's all metal. And I thought if I get into a scuffle with somebody in the street, Having three pounds of metal camera might be a good weapon. And so I think I'll take this one instead. But taking photos with this camera is a little more challenging because it's completely manual. Now it does have light metering in it that helps guide you. But you have to make the determination as to what all these settings are before you take the photo. And so I found myself spending a lot more time setting up my photo with this camera than with the other one. With the other one I could just pick it up, point and shoot. With this one I had to think about it. I had to think about what do I want for depth of field? And what do I want for shutter speed? And I need to find the right combination so that the metering inside the camera would tell me that I'm in the right ballpark for exposure. It really slowed me down in a good way. Slowing me down like that also helped me determine, is this the framing that I want exactly for this photo? And so my photographs with this camera were a lot more well thought out. And that really elevated the artistic output that I was getting from this camera. Now, of course, there's nothing stopping me from putting this camera into a fully manual mode and making the same decisions. But it was just easy to put it in automatic and let it roll. But I didn't get the same results. And so the lesson here is to be deliberate and drive that bus. Don't just let things run in automatic. And by being deliberate and by putting your own creativity into it and making sure that Everything is exactly the way that you want it to be and not relying upon somebody else's presets elevates your art.